What's going on, Flix Talkers? Welcome back to another movie reaction. This time, my first time watching 1980s Airplane. Now, I am super excited to check this film out as I did grow up on parody movies, and I have gone back and watched some of the parody movies from the 70s, from the 80s that I have missed along the way. And people always tell me that this is the creme de la creme of parody movies. And like most parody movies, they usually focus on a certain genre. So I wonder if this is gonna be focusing on just airplane movies or action thriller movies. I'm really not sure. As I'm pretty much going into this movie 100% blind, I don't know what's gonna happen from beginning to end. And that's the best way I like to go into these movies, not knowing a thing about them. I do know that this film does star Leslie Nielsen, who was also in Naked gun i have seen that movie and i thought it was freaking hilarious from what i remember i think i actually saw that as a young kid so a lot of the jokes probably definitely went over my head so i'll have to watch that again as an adult now but before we get into it guys you let me know down in the comments below when was the first time that you saw airplane was it in theaters was it in the comfort of your own home you guys let me know your experiences with the film and if you guys do want to support the channel make sure to hit that big thumbs up and consider subscribing today where i do more reactions like this trailer reactions music reactions and live streams three times a week here on the channel also if you guys are watching this reaction on YouTube and want to watch the full uncensored and unedited reaction, make sure to click on my Patreon link down in the description below. All right, Flix Talkers, without further ado, my first time watching 1980s Airplane. <laughs> they already hit me with my favorite reference, man. Would you put all your metal objects into this dish, please? No stopping in a white zone. You both know perfectly well what it is you're talking about. You want me to have an abortion. It's really the only sensible thing to do. Taxi! What was that about? I'll be back in a minute. I turned it on. Hello, sir. We'd like you to have this flower on behalf of the Church of Religious Consciousness. Would you kick... I mean, he gave his donation right there, that jacket. <laughs> hey, Larry, where's the forklift? It's over there for the baggage loader. Oh God damn! Like a real plane. Don't you feel anything for me at all anymore? It takes so many things to make love last. Most of all, it takes respect, and I can't live with the man I don't respect. Damn. This is Captain Over. Uh, this is Dr. Brody at the Mayo Clinic. There's a passenger on your Chicago flight 209 or a little girl named Lisa Davis en route to Minneapolis. The Mayo Clinic. Oh, oh my. Continuous watch is kept on her ID. <laughs> I have an emergency call for you on line five from a Mr. Ham. All right, give me Ham on five. Hold the mail. I promise I can change. Then why didn't you take the job that Louis Nets offered you at Boeing? You know, I haven't been able to get near a plane since the war. Different cities, different jobs, and not one of them shows you can accept any real responsibility. Elaine, if you just give me one it's more... It's too late. When I get back to Chicago, I'm going to start my life all over again. Damn. Excuse me, we'd like you to have this flower from the Church of Religious Conscience. Oh! About time. You ain't word on that uh, storm lifting over Salt Lake, Clarence? I just reviewed the area report for 1,600 hours through 2,400. Well, there's some light scattered cover at 20,000, icing around 18. <laughs> Latest weather report shows everything socked in from Salt Lake to Oh, is that um, Kareem? How do you do, Roger? Nice to meet you. I'd like one ticket to Chicago. Smoking or non-smoking? Smoking, please. Here, have a nice trip. <laughs> Shit, man. That hunky muff me messing my old lady? Got to be running cold upside down his head. No, he ain't gonna lay no more big rap up on you, man. Mac yourself approach, slick. The gray matter back, lot performers down, not take TCB in, man. Cold got to be. <laughs> <laughs> <And> the subtitles. <laughs> Golly. <laughs> God, Bill, I'm gonna miss you so much. Oh, I'm gonna miss you too. Promise you, right? Every day. Better get on board, son. All aboard! Like it's a train. Three, two, four. We have clearance, Clarence. Roger, Roger. What's our vector, Victor? Now I radio clearance over. That's Clarence over. Over. Roger. Huh? Roger over. What? Hey. Oh my God, we're doing the who's on first bit. His name is Roger. His is over. And then they said Clarence, I think. <laughs> Give me that Clarence, Clarence. <laughs> All 
arrival time in Chicago will be 10.45 p.m. Temperature there is currently 62 degrees. Dad, what are you doing here? Elaine, I've got to talk to you. I don't have time now. No wonder you're upset. She's lovely and a darling figure. Supple, pouting breasts, firm thighs. I remember when we first met. I was in the Air Force. Stationed in Drambui. I used to hang out at the Magumbo Bar. It was a rough place, populated with every reject and cutthroat from Bombay to Calcutta. You could count on a fight breaking out almost every night. The Girl Scouts? Damn! She hit the camera. Yeah! Oh man, it's Saturday Night Fever is up next, guys. <laughs> but that night, fate was on my side. Oh. It's a new dance move. Okay, that's a good first date. <laughs> a first good meetup right there. Would you gentlemen care to order your dinners? Bet, babe. Slide a piece of the pole to the drink side, run the job. Excuse me. I happen to be passing. I thought you'd might like some coffee. Coffee? Cream? No, thank you. I take it black. Like my men. My men? Did she say like my men? <laughs> Whoa, what? Oh my god. Roger, Denver. We have a visitor. Hello. Hi. This is Joey Hammond. Oh, hi, Joey. Joey, we have something here for our special visitors. Thanks a lot. Sure. You ever been in a cockpit before? No, sir. I've never been up in a plane before. You ever seen a grown man naked? Do you want me to check the weather, Clarence? No, why don't you take care of it? Joey. What? You ever hang around the gymnasium? No, Joey can stay here for a while if you'd like. Could I? Okay, if you don't get in the way. No. Thousand. No. We'll report again over Link. You're Kareem Abdul Jabbar. You play basketball for the Los Angeles Lakers. I think you should go back to your seat now, Joey. Right, Clarence? No, he's not bothering anyone. Let him stay here. I think you're the greatest, but my dad says you don't work hard enough on defense. And that you don't really try, except during the playoffs. The hell I don't. <laughs> they got meta, huh? Joey, do you like movies about gladiators? <laughs> Elaine, just hear me out. Man, the creepy pilot. For a long time, but it'll no. Be I remember how you used to hold me. How I used to sit on your face and wriggle, and afterwards how we'd watch until the sun came up. Damn. Not as long as you insist on living in the past. You're too low, Ted. You're too low. Thank you. Thank you. You look so happy today, Doctor. Oh. What's his problem? It's Lieutenant Hurwitz. Severe shell shock. Thinks he's Ethel Merman. You'll be swell. You'll be great. Honey, everything's coming up right. I don't get the reference. <laughs> Would either of you like another cup of coffee? I will, but Jim won't. I think I will have another cup of coffee. Uh oh, Jim. Jim never has a second cup of coffee at home. Excuse me, sister. There's a little girl on board up front who's ill and... Oh, well, yes, I saw. Could I borrow your guitar? I thought maybe I could cheer her up. Oh! Oh! oh. 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 <laughs> Hi. There is only one river. There
there is only one sea. There is oh, no. Elaine and I joined the Peace Corps. I've seen that guy in everything. We were assigned to an isolated tribe, the Malumbos. They'd never seen Americans before. It was really a challenge during the year introducing them to our Western culture. At first, they didn't know what to think of us. Also, supperware products are ideal for storing leftovers to help stretch your food dollar. You must understand, these people had been completely isolated from civilization. I started them on simple calisthenics and gradually worked them up to rudimentary game skills and finally advanced competitive theory. I was patient with them and they were eager to learn. They seemed to enjoy themselves. It was probably due to the advanced American teaching techniques that we were able to bridge the generations of isolation and communicate so successfully with the Malambo. It's time for us to go back home to the plans we made before the war. A lot of people made plans before the war. It was at that moment that I first realized Elaine had doubts about our relationship. You know, I really couldn't blame Elaine. She wanted a career. Oh, it's my stomach. I haven't felt this awful since we saw that Ronald Reagan film. Captain, one of the woman passengers is very sick. Find out if there's a doctor on board as quietly as you can. Joey, have you ever been in a in a Turkish prison? Oh. oh. Jim never vomits at home. Excuse me, sir. I'm sorry I have to wake you. You were a doctor? That's right. We have some passengers. Oh my god. I was about to say, where the hell is Liam ne <laughs> Leslie Nielsen at? I mean. Liam Neeson. <laughs> Let me see your tongue. What? This woman has to be gotten to a hospital. A hospital? What is it? It's a big building with patients, but that's not important right now. Tell the captain I must speak to him. Certainly. <laughs> oh. Victor, we're running into some heavy weather. Can you... Roger, take over. Did everybody get food poisoning or something? Or what's happening? He's wearing his basketball shorts, bro. My God. I haven't seen anything like this since the Anita Bryant concert. What was it we had for dinner tonight? Well, we had a choice, steak, fish. What did he have? He had fish. Find out what the two sick people had for dinner. Uh, a couple points of interest. We're now flying over Hoover Dam. And a little later on, we'll pass just to the south of Grand Canyon. Meanwhile, relax and enjoy your flight, OK? Oh, stewardess, my husband's very sick. Can you do something, please? One thing, do you know what he had for dinner? Yes, of course, we both had fish. Why? Oh, it's nothing to be alarmed about. We'll be back to you very quickly. Both. All right. Now we know what we're up against. Every passenger on this plane who had fish for dinner will become violently ill in the next half hour. Just how serious is it, Doctor? Starts with a slight fever, dryness of the throat. As the virus penetrates the red blood cells, the victim becomes dizzy because you experience an itching, a rash. From there, the poison goes to work on the central nervous system, causing severe muscle spasms, <laughs> followed by the inevitable drooling. At this point, the entire digestive system collapses, accompanied by uncontrollable flatulence, until finally the poor bastard is reduced to a quivering, wasted piece of jelly. <laughs> He's holding on to the controls. Captain Over's passed out on the floor and we've lost the co-pilot. The navigator two were in terrible trouble, Over. Stan, go upstairs to the tower and get a runway diagram. Terry, check down the field for emergency equipment. Chief, we got fog right down to the deck. I want the best available man on this. 
The man who knows that plane inside and out and won't crack under pressure. Get me Rex Kramer. Oh, my God, the automatic pilot, it's deflating. On the belt line of the automatic pilot, there is a hollow tube. Now that is the manual inflation nozzle. Pull it out and blow on it. What the hell's going on up there? <laughs> oh, that was good. That one was good. He likes that. Is there anyone on board who can land this plane? The life of everyone on board depends upon just one thing. Finding someone back there who can not only fly this plane, but who didn't have fish for dinner. By the way, is there anyone on board who knows how to fly a plane? <laughs> <laughs> Just unbelievable. Oh, that's a guy from Unsolved Mysteries, the host. All right, let's get out of here. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> the best voice, man. When they built those roads, they had no thought of drainage in mind. The Jeep up to the main road. Bad accident. Excuse me, sir. You see, the first officer is ill, and the captain needs someone to help him with the radio. Do you know anything about planes? Well, I flew in the war, but that was years ago. I wouldn't know anything about it. Well, that match is going to go out in his hand. Yeah, close. Stewart <laughs> said, Can you fly this plane and land it? Surely you can't be serious. I am serious. And don't call me Shirley. <laughs> oh, I've heard that line. I've heard this line. What flying experience have you had? Oh, that's funny. I didn't know it was from this movie. <laughs> the autopilot is so stupid. <laughs> that's a big panel. Okay, come on. This is not real. Did that? Went on a little too long. This guy's still waiting. Eleven hundred dollars. Right, where the hell is Kramer? <laughs> <laughs> the subtle ones I like, like th those jokes I like. <laughs> the risk of a flame is too great. I don't have time to say this gently, so I'll be very direct. Mr. Stryker, this is the only hope we've got. Those are the flaps. Mayday! Mayday? What the hell is that for? Mayday? Why, that's the Russian New Year. You know, we'll have a big parade and we'll serve hot or dirt. I've got to get out of here. I've got to get out of here. Calm oh, down. Get a hold of yourself. Stewardess, please, let me handle this. I've got to get out of here. Calm down. Now get back to your seat. Down. Get a hold of yourself. Don't do your one another thing. Everything's going to be all right. Sister, please, I'll handle this. Oh, man, the whole Oh, shit. <laughs> Donations to the Reverend Moon. Juice for Jesus. Oh. Oh. about Jehovah's Witness. Oh, oh yeah. Scientology. More nuclear power. Scientology. Yo, he really did that. <laughs> that was all him. All right, Steve, let's face a few facts. As you know, I flew with this man Stryker during the war. <laughs> He's going to have enough on his mind without worrying about those times. Stryker, this is Captain Rex Kramer speaking. Yes, Captain Kramer. Read you loud and clear. Right. It's obvious you remember me. So what do you say you and I just forget about everything except what we have to do now? You know I've never flown a bucket like this. I'm going to need all the luck there is. Uh, first, I want you to get the feel of the plane. Later, we'll run down the landing procedure. Just remember the controls will feel very heavy compared to a fighter. Somebody there who can work the radio and leave you free for flying. The auto autopilot wanted some. What's going on? We have a right to know the truth. All right, I'm going to level with you all. There's no reason to panic. Now, it is true that one of the crew members is ill. Yeah. But the other two pilots are just fine. She mofo butterly into the bone, jacking me up. I'm sorry, I don't understand. Cuddy say can't hang. I speak jive. Oh, good. 
He said Jive? that he's in great pain and he wants to know if you can help him. Would you tell him to just relax and I'll be back as soon as I can with some medicine? Just hang loose, blood. She gonna catch up on the rebound on the med side. What it is, big mama? My mama raised no dummies. I duck her rap. Cut me some slack, yeah. Chomp don't want to help. Chomp don't get the help. Say can't hang, say seven up. Jive ass dude don't got no brains in here. Jive? Is that like a... I don't even want to guess what that is. Johnny, what can you make out of this? This? Some kind of slang. Well, I can make cap, or a brooch, or pterodactyl. Um. <laughs> what is up with this dude? Hello? Mrs. Over? There's some trouble on your husband's flight. But Steve McCroskey thought you'd want to get down here right away. Yes, I'll be right down. She's sleeping with the horse? You can let yourself out the back door. There's juice in the refrigerator. What in the world? <laughs> Doctor. Two more minutes. They could be miles off course. That's impossible. They're on instruments. This is going to be a real sweat. Looks like I picked the wrong week to quit amphetamines. <laughs> Chief, these reporters won't leave without a statement. Who's flying the plane? One of the passengers. But he's an experienced Air Force pilot who flew during the war, so there's no cause for alarm. Henshaw, take over. Okay, boys. Let's get some pictures. I want the one of the fuck of war. So I'm wondering if this is a spoof or a murder mystery because everyone getting sick. I wonder if that, you know, is going to play into anything. Girl, she's into that hard sh Okay. She flying high. We're running out of time. Surely there must be something you can do. I'm doing everything I can. And stop calling me Shirley. <laughs> R E S P E C T. I've never been so scared. Besides, I'm 26 and I'm not married. Do you have any idea when we'll be landing? Pretty soon. How are you bearing up? Be honest, I've never been so scared. But at least I have a husband. <laughs> you got a lot of clever dialogue like that. And then you have literal gags, like literal jokes that just form into a gag, you know? Let's take the pictures. They take them off the, you know, wall and whatnot. Not a fan of those, but I'm a fan of the clever writing. Oh, rats. Boss number four. The oil pressure. I forgot to check the oil pressure. Kramer hears about this. The sh is going to hit the fan. <laughs> How did I know that was going to happen? I was in the war myself, medical corps on late duty one night when they brought in a badly wounded pilot from one of the raids. Looked up at me and Doc, he said, the odds were against us up there, but we went in anyway. The pilot's name was George Zip. George Zip said that? The last thing he said to me, Doc, he said, sometime the crew is up against it. The brakes are beating the boys. Tell them to get out there and give it all they've got. Excuse me, Doc. I've got a plane to land. <laughs> Home run. All right, Colosimo, you work the relay. Roberts, check all air traffic within five miles. Get that finger out of your ear. You don't know where that finger's been. Husband and the others are alive, but unconscious. Now, there's a chance that we can save them if Stryker can get that plane down on time. Where did you get that dress? It's awful, and those shoes and that coat. Jeez. <laughs> Hey, oh. Budweiser <laughs> ice cream truck. Air Israel, please clear the runway. Air Israel. See, that's funny. That's funny. <laughs> WZAZ in Chicago, where disco lives forever. Disco's dead. I just want to tell you both good luck. We're all counting on you. Land too fast, use your emergency brakes. That doesn't stop you. Looks like I picked the wrong week to quit sniffing blue. Just kidding. <laughs> Left your nose. Your eyes on the far end of the runway. 
Reminds me of playing Top Gun on Nintendo. Oh my god, he's soaking. I just want to tell you both, good luck. We're all counting on you. That is the best gag right there. Striker? That and the guy over the intercom saying, This is the wrong day to quit smoking or drinking or popping pills, whatever. With no wheels. Yo, what the hell? <laughs> Auto. Like autopilot. Oh my god, I just got that. I literally just got that. Oh sh All right, y'all. And that was my first time watching 1980s Airplane. All right, guys. So I definitely had a fun time with that movie, though. I mean, they tried to create this story other than, you know, I mean, when it comes to a scary movie, loaded weapon, naked gun, even, I understand that there is a story. There has to be a story, right? But these usually have these elements or things that happen that do get tied up. In this film, it was kind of just left hanging. I mean, people got sick. We didn't figure out the reason why. I mean, there was a girl that was in there with the heart transplant. She was expendable. I mean, other than a couple of gags along the way, right? It didn't really even matter to show that she needed a heart transplant. We just needed to know that she needed to go on that plane. So, I mean, she could have just popped up on that plane and they could have just said she's waiting on a heart transplant we didn't need to see the doctor with the heart hopping around and whatnot but i understand there are certain gags in here and there are levels to gags i just realized watching this film for the first time there are levels to gag and just clever writing i was more of a fan of the clever writing well, i'm actually watching minutes. the scene right here i'll put it back up this but is a post-credit scene wow the guy's still waiting for his fare that is funny <laughs> so once again certain gags definitely hit me and were a lot more funnier than others i will say that just a personal preference i know comedy is totally subjective i understand that i get that you had all these plot holes that you didn't really need just hit me with the gags back to back i think that'd be more funny but once again i want to say that this is probably a first of its kind i don't really know how far and few this was from blazing saddles i think blazing saddles might have come out before it i could have been totally wrong but that one had the beats that were definitely just hitting for a non-stop hysterical time at least for me though this one definitely had those moments so i don't want to make this review too long because it is a satirical parody movie so i'm just going to give 1980s airplane a solid three out of five all right flick stalkers what do you rank airplane you guys let me know down in the comments below out of five what was your favorite part and i gotta say my favorite part was probably some of leslie nielsen's lines i mean come on don't call me Shirley, and we're all counting on you, said about three times, that was dumb funny for me. For some reason, that was just hysterical. And if you guys did appreciate my reaction and thoughts along the way, please let me know by hitting that big thumbs up and consider subscribing today where I do more movie reactions like this, trailer reactions, music reactions, and live streams three times a week here on the channel. Also, if you guys are watching this reaction on YouTube and want to watch the full uncensored and unedited reaction, make sure to click on my Patreon link down in the description below. All right, Flix Talkers, till next time, I'm gone. Peace.